Well, let's go to our first uh, topic of discussion today. Uh, yes, uh, today we'll start with the number of active internet subscribers in Nigeria increased by 0.62%. Year on year in the first quarter of uh, 2022, 145.9 million from 145 million uh, barrels. 145 million, I beg your pardon, achieved in the same period last year. According to the late, late, latest quarterly telecommunications report released by the National Bureau of Statistics, Lagos, Ogun, and Kano ranked as the states with the highest number of internet data subscribers in the country, jointly accounting for 23.8% of the total internet subscriber base in the country. A breakdown of the report shows that Lagos states to top for active internet subscription with a total of 17,839,569 subscribers in the period under review, closely followed by Ogun State uh, with 8,538,812, Kano State 8,364,584, Payosa, uh, Eboi, Ekiti, and other states follow respectively. Meanwhile, slow growth was recorded in call tariff in the period under review. Uh, due to inability of Nigerians to buy and register new SIM cards following directives from the federal government to halt the sale of new cards over security measures, as well as directive that all SIM cards must be linked to the national identification number in our end. Well, let's discuss this further. And joining me via Zoom is a tech analyst from Naira Metrics. It's Mr. Samson Akitaro. Thank you so much for your time. It's your first time on the show. We appreciate you. Yeah, thank you, good afternoon, and thank you for having me. Yes, let's start with the figures. I know it won't be so surprising uh, that Lagos is leading the pack. But first, what is your reaction to this increase? 0.62% year-on-year seems to be marginal. Okay, yeah, thank you. Of course, it's not surprising that Lagos is leading. Lagos has always led in terms of active voice subscription and active internet subscription. And the reason is not far-fetched at the commercial life center of the country. You know, a lot of activities that are going on in the state. But let me not go into that. The reason why we have so marginal increase, uh, you mentioned it earlier. You know, in December 2020, the federal government came up with a policy that every SIM owner will now have to link their NIN, that is their national identification number, to their SIMs. So, of course, deadline was given, and that the deadlines were shifted several times until April this year, when the deadline actually took effect. But in the course of that, in the course of the last one year, we've seen a lot of, you know, there was a time SIM activation was blocked, so nobody could activate any SIMs. People who lost their SIMs could not reactivate it, could not recover, because as at that time, there was nothing like issuing new SIMs. So, in that, in that time, the operators have lost a, no, a lot of uh, internet users, internet customers. I think as, um, as of my last calculation, um, before the ban was lifted, I think they lost about 20 million internet subscriptions. So it's not surprising that we have just 0.62% uh, increase. And that is because they are just bouncing back. Because if you look at the figure, even as at that time, as at uh, March, which was 1.5 million, it's far, far low from where we were in December 2020 when the, pol pop the policy was put in place. So it's actually, yeah, the, the industry is just bouncing back from the impact of the policy. So that is what I see about it. Thank you. Mm, great stuff there. But uh, let's now look at service providers who are also uh, highly involved in this. Uh, they've complained about issues in recent times, operational costs, price of diesels, and all of that. Uh, how do you see this affecting their business? Let's talk around that too. Of course, it's, it's going to affect them a great deal because uh, as it is, first they have moved for increments, which the Nigerian Communications Commission says no, they have to go through some due process before it can even approve any increment. And as we are talking, the cost of diesel is increasing every day. I think what's going to happen now is that, of course, their operating expenses will go up, will go up, and they have no choice. They can't increase the price according to the regulator. So we, the impact is going to reflect in their financials by the end of this year. Of course, maybe you may see a reduction in profits or maybe loss at the end of the day because by the time they value in the, 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 the rising operating costs and then the revenue, there's no definitely the revenue may not increase. Of course, there's increased slightly because people, a lot of people are using data now. 
but you can't really just suppose that we do, we be rise in the cost of this which is their main 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 uh, main, main, main operating cost because it, i think according to the operators about 40 percent of the operating cost goes into powering the base station the base station has to be live has, has to be up and running 24 7 and they can't depend on the national grid for that so it's, it's it's really going to affect their profit maybe at the end of this year and then we, we are we are looking forward to seeing how this this pans out at the end hmm. let's now go back to internet service there is always this worry about security particularly of data and of course personal information many are worried about this you're a tech analyst mm -hmm. uh, what how does this come to you You mean about data, data privacy, right? Hello? Yes, yes, please. Hello? Yes, yeah, please, go I, ahead. I think data, data security is an issue all over the world. And uh, in some, even in developed countries, we've seen countries sanctioning all these tech giants for breach of data privacy. So even though in Nigeria we have the GDPR, which is the, no, sorry, what we have in Nigeria is the national data protection regulation ndpr so which which was fashioned after the european gdpr but we've not seen much of uh, sanctions we've not seen and then and i think what, what what's really happening is that even the if, if they are going to apply sanctions the the government is also culpable in some areas because the government handles as an access to a lot of data we're talking about the nin linking it with your sim so a lot of the data are even with the government but we not really have uh, enforcement of data data privacy. So we can't really say there is really protection for the Nigerian's data currently. So of course, people have the, the concern will always be there. Even though in countries where there is law, there are concerns about their data. People are still breaching data privacy. So in, in Nigeria, in Nigeria, where we've not seen much of a, though even though what we have is a regulation and which is not law, we've not seen much of a execution of that regulation. So, of course, the, the, the issue of data, data privacy will always come up. Mm, it would always come up. Now, I also want to go to, during COVID, we saw that small businesses and or even big businesses took advantage of the internet, of course, yeah. uh, to make their businesses known, you know, to another way of advertising. Uh, yeah. But I want to ask you, do you think we are doing enough to take advantage of that space to sell our goods, to advertise uh, what we do, goods and services, one way or the other, in this part of the world. Are we doing enough? Yes, and no. Yes, because we are not where we used to be. Of course, as you mentioned, the COVID 19 has opened a lot of people's eyes to the potentials of the internet. So today, people can, I think, before, before now, before COVID 19, if we are to have a conversation like this, probably I will have to come to your studio. Uh, but COVID-19 has made us re realize that, of course, you can do this anywhere. You can do this thing from anywhere. So likewise, businesses, a lot of businesses are leveraging the internet to promote. We have everybody is like a seller today, especially if you see guests, their WhatsApp, their WhatsApp uh, status has become their market. They use it to post a lot of things. So gradually, I think Nigerians are realizing the potentials of the internet and people are making use of it. And that is also reflecting in, in, in the revenues of the operators because if you look at the last report released by maybe uh, MTN and ETSE, so there is huge increase in their data revenue. Even when the number of internet uh, users are decreasing, it shows that even the few people that are on the internet, they are making use, they are spending a lot. People are using the internet. So, Gradually, we are getting there. Of course, we've not done enough. We can't compare ourselves to the developed countries, but I, I believe we are, we, are, we are getting there and we are, we, are, we, are, we are moving up in that area. Thank you. Beautiful stuff there. We, we expect 5G network uh, to be up anytime soon. Uh, what are your expectations with regards to, to this? Okay, yeah, according to Nigerian Communications, 5G, maybe the two operators are licensed. MTN and MAFAP communications are expected Up, to yeah. start rolling out by this August. Of course, uh, what, what, what I know is that um, 5G, of course, is going to bring a lot of new possibilities. But for now, we've not really explored 4G because what many Nigerians still need now is 4G, the speed of 4G. 
before you can even talk of uh, 5G. So, of course, 5G is good, it's going to change a lot of things, but I can bet you at the, at the beginning, not, it's not everybody that's going to be on 5G, even if M10 rolls out 5G today, it's not everybody that's going to be on 5G. First, you have to talk about 5G enabled phones. It means a lot of people are going to change their phones to have 5G enabled phones. Then, when it comes to speed, you also realize that the most, uh, in, in the days of 3G, 2G, People can spend like 1,000 naira subscription in a month. But now when people are on 4G, a lot of people are complaining that even their 3,000 naira subscription does not last them one week. Of course, it's soon because the speed is different and a lot of things are happening on your phone because of the speed, you won't even know that they are happening. You see a video, you click on it, you watch, probably maybe under one minute, you have finished watching it. Of course, you will know, but you are know, burning your money. So the same thing when 5G comes, of course, those who can afford it will be on 5G, and those who can afford 4G will also continue to use their 4G. Of course, it's a new revolution which is going on all over the world, and it's a good thing that Nigeria has also joined. So by from August out in Nigeria, and we see how Nigeria will be able to embrace it. Thank you. Hmm. Almost finally now, uh, we see some states not doing too well with regards to internet penetration. Uh, do you think anything can be done to, you know, because uh, internet, one way or the other, is life, you know? Yeah. So do you think anything can be done to encourage states like that? What can be done so that more people can key into uh, technological innovations, of course, because that's the way to go. Yeah, thank you. I think what, what can be done is if government is going to subsidize infrastructure development, deployment rather, because you know the operators are out for profit. And that is why you can see that uh, a place like Lagos and Ogun that is sharing proximity with Lagos, they have large numbers of users. The, the fact is that the operators will deploy their infrastructure in areas where they know that they can get their returns on investment. So if you look at states with uh, maybe states where that their population is with lower population, you see that now talking about Bayesa, talking about Ikiti, they realize that, okay, in those states, the population is not that much, the revenue is not going to come much from that area. So that is why in Nigeria today, we still have a lot of uh, gap between the urban and the rural when we talk about telecommunications. Of course, in Lagos, everybody's enjoying 4G, 3G, and uh, maybe and 5G very soon. But in some parts of the country, it's difficult for you to even enjoy maybe 2G. When you get to some areas, what you see is E, which is just like uh, the old uh, 1G, it's not even 2G, not 3G. And you find it difficult to browse. So what the government can do is to encourage uh, the operators to deploy infrastructures in rural areas in the remotest parts of the country. So with that, everybody can have access. Of course, people want to use but you can't compare the amount of money people in Lagos will spend on internet with the amount of people people in, uh, let's say, in a state like uh, Bayesa we spend on the internet. Of course, there are multinationals there, but talk about the indigenous of those places. So the operators look at those considerations in deploying their infrastructure. That is why you see that the, 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 the number of subscriptions in those states are very low. And that is because the infrastructure there is not as much as what you have in a place like Lagos, in a place like Ogo State, and then in Kano, where they, are, they, they have the population. So all these factors depend on government subsidizing infrastructure development. I know I'm aware the Nigerian Communication is having a plan in, uh, towards that by licensing some infrastructure companies called the uh, Infracos. But those ones are yet to roll out yet. Those type of companies are expected to roll out the infrastructure across the six geo geopolitical zones of the country and then to be subsidized by the government. So I believe if that is a, if they are able to succeed with that, I think we can have equal access in all around the country. Of course, the revenue for the operator is not going to be the same. That is why the issue of subsidy must always come in. Thank you. Let's wrap up on this note. Mm -hmm. We've seen the contribution of ICT and of course telecommunications to GDP mm -hmm. looking very good, obviously. Uh, we've seen that, and even uh, projections that we have show that it will continue to do better as we move. What is your outlook for, for the entire space? Yeah, of course, uh, it's, it's going to continue to get better because, you know, ICT is not just ICT on its own. ICT is now rubbing off on all sectors of the economy. 
I don't think there's any sector of the economy that can operate today without ICT. Talk of oil and gas, talk of banking, talk of the capital market. So every sector now ride on ICT. So of course, the impact is going to continue to increase. And then a lot of businesses are being built on ICT. A lot of small businesses, and then you now come to startups. You know, we are having a lot of startups coming up in Nigeria, attracting funds from outside the country. All these are based on ICT. And if you factor all this into the economy, you see that year on year, the contributions of ICT into the GDP will continue to increase for a long time to come. Thank you so much. Our yeah, brilliant conversation there. I've been yeah, speaking to Mr. Uh, Samson Akintaro, who's a tech analyst with Nara Metrics. I hope to have you join us on the show yeah. uh, anytime soon again. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you for having me.